right, if you could uh, say and state your name. Okay, my name is Jose Rodella, and uh, um, uh, what was the other question? Well, if you could spell Rodella. R-O-D-E-L-A. I'm Drew Brooks with the Fayetteville Observer in Fayetteville, North Carolina. All right. um, it, first question, um, what were you doing, and, and what was your reaction when you first heard the news that you would be honored here? Uh, I was in, uh, in San Antonio, was it? Yeah, mm -hmm. San Antonio. They called, uh, the president called me, and told me that uh, it would be an honor for me to be here to, to present me to the Medal of Honor, so sure. And that was the end of the conversation. So well, that was it. I was surprised that he would call me, but uh, uh, I respect that, and so uh, I'm here. <laughs> um, how, much of, uh, how much does this mean to you tomorrow, the ceremony tomorrow, or are you looking forward to it? Oh yes, very much. It's a, it's a very uh, uh, wonderful to know that we be recognized uh, because of that. But uh, it's a lot of people involved in my actions and in the war, and I'm sure that they'll they're all happy to see me because of them. You know, that's the only reason why I'm here because of because of them, because of the people that were in the war with me. Some of them came back, some of them didn't come back, so yes. Well, can you briefly explain your actions uh, on that day, uh, the actions that have now led to the Medal of Honor? Oh, we had been in the jungle for a couple of weeks, no action, and we were, we were hungry. And I had a company of uh, Cambodians, and so uh, fell into a machine gun position and surprised them and they got so so nervous they, they forgot to to pull the back on the on the handle of the machine gun and they saw me and so I approached them and they they started shooting and they, they killed three of my men I had a company of Cambodians so uh, that made me mad so when they finished firing them, the belt they had the old type of belt uh, like a cloth type belt on the machine gun, and uh, it was twisted. There was three men on that machine gun position, and the belt got there, but they didn't, they, they, they didn't know how to untwist the belt, and so that gave me an advantage to approach them, and before they could start firing again, I shot all three of them and recovered my, my dead and wounded. And that was the end of that. Uh, but they were surprised as much as I was, you know. We had been in the jungle for a couple of months and no real action, so we were ready. We were ready for something to happen, you know. Sure, and, uh, but uh, that belt, that belt stopped it from shooting again. <laughs> yeah, but now they use uh, the, the link, the metal link type belt, so there's no problem with being, being twisted. Well, you were a, a Green Beret. Um, can you tell me what drew you to Special Forces? Uh, why did you want to, to... I had two friends of mine that were killed in Special Forces. Uh, Joe Hager and Rudy Chavez. They're on the black wall here. So, and that, that encouraged me to, to join up. And I was hoping to see them again, but uh, I found out later that they, they had died in the, in the war. So. I was very sad about it, sure. Yes, sir. So. Well, uh, during those actions uh, and since you came back home, uh, did you ever imagine that you'd receive this medal or be honored oh, in such I a way? Was, I was very satisfied with the DSC. I still am. And, uh, I heard uh, the president call me and uh, told me about the Medal of Honor. Said, sure, yeah. I'll take it. Uh, I lost some men in the war, and, and I'm sure that they'll be glad to, you know, just as I am, to be recognized, not only me, but the people that work with me. Sure, yes. So you, you kind of consider this uh, sort of a, a an award that you're sharing with with some of your, oh, your fellow soldiers? I, I, would, I had a company of Cambodians, and every three months I would go to Cambodia and load up a C-123 and take them to war train him and take him to war. Yeah. That was my job. I did that for a couple of years. 
And yes, I took care of them. You know. I trained them and uh, I fed them and uh, took them to come back. So they were happy to go. <laughs> well, the day uh, of the actions, uh, what was going through your head um, it, when you responded to, to the ambush? I was what were you thinking? For the enemy. <laughs> I was looking for the bad guys and I found them. And luckily it was a machine gun position and uh, I just happened to run into them. They got so excited, they didn't know what to do. <laughs> but uh, we were in there. By the time I got to the center of the, of the, of the camp, they, they had already scattered. But I got some of them. Yeah. Sure. And you said that was the, the first real action of that particular deployment? No, or? no, no. We had been in the month three. I mean, uh, the jungle three months. Okay. Yeah, we, had, we run into uh, scrimmages, mm -hmm. you know, small, you know, mid-sized. And, and that, that was my job. Work in North Vietnam and get rid of the bad guys. That's what we were doing. Now, when you returned back uh, home, it, have you shared this story a lot, or, or has it been difficult to, to bring up the memories and no, talk about it since the medal? No, I, I haven't shared it, except with my wife, but uh, other than that, no, 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 I don't say too much about it. In Special Forces, we, we don't communicate too much. That's why they don't like us. <laughs> well, what's been the reaction um, uh, among your neighbors and folks in your community back home uh, to this news? They don't know nothing about it, even now. No, they don't, except my, my son and his family. But that's about it. I don't, I don't share it, especially my two friends, Juli Chavez and Joe Hay. How did your family respond uh, to learning that you'd received this honor? Um, just my wife. I was very proud of him. He, uh, yeah. I knew he deserved it because of all the work he had done. And I always said, you know, that he got the medal right before the Medal of Honor. What do you think tomorrow's going to be like? Um, are, are you prepared? Uh, be there at the ceremony to get the medal? Oh, just uh, to me, just like an everyday activity, you know, except I'm going to meet the president and hoping to shake his hand, sure. You know, it's something special, of course. And I'll treat it like that, something very special. Any thoughts to what you're going to, to do with the medal? Are you going to display it in your home? or? No, I'm going to keep it between me and my wife <laughs> and my son and family members, sure. Uh, how old your son? Is he is he going to be able to be here tomorrow? Or? Yes, he's with me today. So, yeah, he's the oldest. I have two sons. It, had you thought at all, or do you think much about um, that particular day in in Vietnam, or had you been thinking about it uh, the past you know, four decades, or, or however long it's been? No, but I like to go back. Go back to war, sure. And, uh, and special forces, we always need people, always. And so, but uh, it's been it's been a good experience, 20 years, and so I'm all right. Is there, sir, is there anything else uh, you'd like to add that maybe we haven't covered? No, no, I haven't. Nothing else to add. Just I'm glad to be here. I'm enjoying it. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Sure.